بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم like that the quran is a book where like i said every minute and every second of your life you live as it was the last moment every moment of your life you live like it's judgment day there's you don't you don't live your life like, otherwise why do anything so this hadith that i'm about to say it encapsulates what our understanding is about the end of times. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Mata Sa'a? O Messenger of Allah, when is the day of judgment? When is the day of judgment? So now the question of when, this is what is his concern, right? Is it now? Is it a hundred years from now? Is it a thousand years from now? So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, ما أعددت لها What have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for it? In this hadith, it tells us everything. This, is, this hadith could speak volumes. Number one is the person is asking about the end of times. What's the objective of asking about the end of times? Right? What's the uh, objective of asking when will all of this end? So... You know, in his mind, it was, it was probably one thing. He wants to know, is it close? So then the Prophet ﷺ brought his attention to something more important than knowing the end of time. And that is, what have you prepared for it? Because this is, in essence, more important than anything else. You know, one of the, you know, one of the mashayikh, he mentions, the end of time is two, right? Qiyamah is two. Qiyamatul al-kubra wa qiyamatul al-sughra. Qiyamatul al-kubra is when the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets, everything comes to an end. That's qiyamatul al-kubra, the major end of time, where the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and everything just collapses. Right? إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ Right? Surahs of the Quran, Surah Infitar. And Surah Kuwirat have been revealed about this, you know, this Qiyamah Kubra, the major Qiyamah. But then the Mashayikh say, but Qiyamah to Sughra, the lesser day of judgment, can happen to you at any moment, and that is death. That is death. فَمَنْ مَاتَ فَقَدْ قَامَتْ قِيَامَتُهُ The one who dies, his Qiyamah has already begun. What is Qiyamah? Your judgment day. So why are you worried about that, which who knows when that's going to be? Maybe a million years from now. Maybe 20,000 years from now. Maybe 50 years from now. Who knows? But there is another Qiyamah, which is, it's, 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 it could be a blink of an eye. It could be that some of us, you know, who knows? Maybe somebody might not come out to see the end of this lecture. Maybe somebody might, come, might not come out to see this morning. He might not pass this evening. Who know? I mean, this is, if, even if you don't have faith, even if you don't believe in God, this is a reality that nobody denies. This is a qiyamah that nobody denies. The qiyamah that death is haq, it is a reality, and it is, you know, it could be literally a blink of an eye away. So when the Prophet ﷺ told us about ma a'adatta laha, what have you prepared for it? That is why we want to know about the understanding, you know, these signs so that we can prepare, so that we can be aware. This is number one. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked about the day of judgment, what did he say? What did you prepare for it? So the objective, objective number one, inshallah we're going to get to it. We haven't actually started. I wanted to repeat a hadith that we did in the 40 hadith, which relates to the series that we're going to start. We're not going to start it. We're going to start it next week, inshallah. But I wanted to just give some preliminary thoughts and discussions about this. Why we want to talk about this. What's the purpose? What's the objective? Not so everybody can sell their house and not so people can be entertained and uh, not so you know, uh, people can become depressed or become scared or become excited. And there's another thing about the signs of the end of times, right? 
There's a slight bit of entertainment in it, right? There's an excitement in it. There's an entertainment in it. It's kind of scary. It kind of gives you a rush. So people, you know, they love, uh, you know, talk about Dajjal and talk about the Antichrist and the end of times and all of that because there's like this, there's an entertainment aspect to it which we shouldn't fall into that. What should we, what should we realize from that is, number one, that if it's close, okay, what have you prepared? Because if that's not close, that might be 100, 200,000 years, but death is definitely close. So what have you prepared for it? So that's the first you know, point. The second point, what is the objective of this series that we're doing? One is so that we can prepare, because these are signs that the end is near. right? The second thing is, is in these hadiths of the Prophet, there is a miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet 1400 years ago spoke about things that if we, you know, read them, we are reading them and we are seeing it happening with our eyes, right before our eyes. That perhaps people 1400 years ago or people a thousand years ago who were reading the same hadith, they could not realize what is the meaning of this in reality. Now, this is a, it's like a miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are witnessing through the ahadith of the Prophet, through the prophecies of the Prophet. Because another thing is one of the signs of the veracity and the truthfulness of a messenger is that when he gives a prophecy, that prophecy comes true. This is a sign of the miracle of that Prophet. And we have that miracle till this day preserved in the hadith of the Prophet. So when we see it, for me, reading the ahadith of the end of times, it just increases my iman. It increases my faith in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It increases my uh, confidence that the hadith that is being, being narrated to us was preserved with the authentic chain, with great effort, this was preserved. Because now that which was preserved and it was unchanged for 1400 years ago and the manuscripts from 1400 years ago show the same thing that is happening now. It's not like they, they saw it and then they made it up just now. This has been narrated for a thousand years, more than that. So it shows us the miracle of Rasulullah and this will increase our iman. This is the second point. Right. The third point is a, another uh, important aspect is many people we see nowadays, they are rejectors of hadith. There are people who say, I don't know about these hadith, I don't know if they're trustworthy, I don't believe in it. Right? People are uh, doubting the authenticity of these hadith. Or they're saying these hadith were concocted, these hadith were fabricated. Well, when you see and read these hadith, and you see they are completely in conformance to the happenings of today, mind-boggling, like some of the things that you see with such exactitude that it is like, it's like impossible. How can somebody have fabricated? How can somebody have concocted this? So other than the Quran al Kareem, which is a miracle of Allah, we see the hadith of the Prophet, which is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're seeing them with your own eyes. Therefore, how can the hadith from him be concocted or fabricated or made up? With that being said, these are some of the very important objectives. And in that, I wanted to share with you this hadith that passed. We did this in the Arba'een of Imam al-Nawawi. It's the hadith of Jibreel, which is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he says, we were sitting together with the Prophet sallallahu one day when suddenly a man ap appeared. A man intensely white clothes, intensely black hair. You did not see any signs of travel on him. And he asked the Prophet sallallahu four questions. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? Three questions, four. Or, and, then, and he said, number four, you know, when and at what time is the Day of Judgment going to happen? So the Prophet ﷺ, when, you know, the, the Sahaba radiallahu were watching this, this is man came and he comes and he sits in front of the Prophet and he puts his knees to the knees of the Prophet. And then when he asks, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni anil Islam. O Muhammad Sallallahu inform me about what is Islam. So he said, Islam is that you bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. 
and Muhammad is his messenger, and that you establish the prayer, and that you give the zakat, and that you fast the Ramadan, and that you do the hajj if you have the capacity to do so. And then the man said, Sadaqt, you've spoken the truth. So then he says, فَعَجِبْنَا لَهُ يَسْأَلُهُ وَيُصَدِّقُهُ We were shocked. How is this person asking the Prophet and then he's saying, you are right. You, you don't say that to the messenger. So this shows us like, is he testing the messenger of Allah? He knows the question. He knows the answer already. Then he says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ Tell me about faith. Tell me about iman. So he said that you believe in Allah and you believe in the angels and you believe in the books and you believe in the messengers and you believe in the last day and you believe that everything good and bad of destiny is from him. And he said, you have told the truth. Then he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ Tell me about ihsan, about excellence. He says that you worship Allah as if you see Him, and then if you cannot, then know that He sees you. Then be aware that Allah sees you wherever you are. This is the excellence. This is how you, uh, you will achieve ihsan. And then he says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ السَّاعَةِ Tell me about when is the day of judgment. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَى مِنَ السَّائِلِ That the one being questioned does not, not, does not know more than the questioner. The one being questioned does not know more than the questioner. Meaning, I don't know more than what you know. Meaning, I don't know, I don't know when is the hour. قَالَ فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنْ أَمَارَاتِهَا Then he said, then inform me of its signs. If you don't know when is the day of judgment, tell me about the signs of the day of judgment. To what he, so then he said, أَن تَلِدَ الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا That the slave girl, she'll give birth to her master. وَأَن تَرَ الْحُفَاتَ الْعُرَاتَ الْعَالَةَ رِعَاءَ الشَّاءَ يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ And you will see the barefoot, half-naked, desert shepherd herders, right? These sheep herders, they will build high-rise buildings. They will compete in building high-rise buildings. And then the person left. And Umar said, I, I was gone for some time, and then when I came back, the Prophet told me, Ya Umar, atadri man is sail. Oh Umar, do you know who was the questioner? Do you know who was asking these questions? Qultu Allahu wa Rasulu Alam. I said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, That was Jibreel, and He came to teach you your deen. So, what do we learn from this? That the deen has four components Islam, Iman, Ihsan, and alamatu sa'a. These are the four fundamental points that make up our religion. This is very interesting. We, Islam, this is one aspect of our external practices. Right? And the Prophet said, what, is, what constitutes Islam? Iman, that's also a part of faith. That is our internal aspect, what we believe. And then there's ihsan, it is the spiritual aspect, the awareness and the consciousness which brings together our faith and our practice. And then lastly, it has to do with uh, the changes that are going to come. In other words, the Prophet ﷺ is as if he is saying, look, no matter how much you practice, you have Islam and you have Iman, and you do that with perfection. But know that all of this is for an end. All of this is going to end. This world is going to end. And you will essentially have to stand before Allah and be answerable to Him. This is not going to be forever. This world isn't going to be forever. And this brings all of it right to a, to a purpose. Because if somebody says, okay, Islam and Iman and Ihsan, then the question is, okay, all of this for what? Forever and ever, we're just going to do this. It's going to go on forever. No, all of this is going to come to an end one day. All of this is going to wrap up. The story is going to, you know, how long is, the, is, is this story going to continue? No, there isn't an end to this story. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ informed us about it. It's very interesting. There is a, 
knowledge of this, and there's a, a Sheikh uh, Abu Bakr al-Mashhur al-Adani, who just recently passed away. He compiled a book on fiqh al-tahawwulat, he calls it. Very, very sophisticated. Fiqh al-tahawwulat means the understanding and the knowledge of the changes that will come in the, in the end of times. So we understand that when we study Islam, it is an ilm. It's a knowledge. It's a fiqh. We learn it and we do it. When we talk about iman, also it's a knowledge. We learn it and we internalize it. And when we talk about ihsan, perfection of, of, of our characteristics, it's a fiqh. You're supposed to learn it. But the knowledge of the end of times is not something that you can do. Right? Islam, you do. Iman, you do. Islam, you practice it. You pray. You give zakat. You give, do hajj. You do psalm. You do shahada. This is something you do. Right? In iman, it's something you do. You believe. Right? And in ihsan, it's something you do. You have sincerity. You stay away from pride. You show generosity. You show kindness. You, do, you, don't, you, you don't be greedy. You, you know, all of these are you, things that you do. But in the signs of the Day of Judgment, which is a knowledge, you don't do. But it is for you to know and to be watchful about and to be aware and to discuss so that you can protect yourself from any of the realities that are going to come about in that time to be aware of it. Right? It's not something that you do. That fiqh, which is called fiqh tahawulat the knowledge of the transitions of the ends of times, that when a transition of the end of time, for example, industrial revolution came. This was a transition to be aware that it's going to come so that you prepare yourself for that happening, right? You can see that, it, and this is, this is a beautiful istilah he has made. He calls ilmu fiqh tahawulat the knowledge of understanding the transmission, the, the transition of history, the transitions that take place in time. Because look, before the Industrial Revolution, things were different. Human beings were different. Times were different. Right? Before electricity, human beings were different. Times were different. Right? Before the internet, before the internet, human beings were different. Children were different. People, people were different. Right? And we, now when you think about like those who have lived 40 years or more, and you've seen throughout the decades these tahawulat, these transitions in history, these changes as we have lived, you can see how in each time being aware of those challenges and knowing what to do is very important. The Prophet ﷺ in regards to this, he said something very beautiful. He says, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعْشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِ فَسَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Those amongst you, all my companions who live after me, you're going to see a lot of changes in this world. Here the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, فَسَيَرَى إِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا يعني فَسَيَرَى تَحَوُّلَاتٍ وَتَغَيُّرَاتٍ كَثِيرًا You're going to see changes, transitions. Right? So, ilm islam doesn't change. Ihsan, Islam, Iman, there's no change. But in, right, when you have the تَحَوُّلَاتٍ تَحَوُّلَاتٍ and that sa'a, the end of times, things are changing constantly. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعْشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Those amongst you who are going to live after me, you're going to see a lot of changes. You're going to see a lot of transitions. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling them now. So therefore, he is telling them about the changes and he's telling them for something to do. Now what does he tell them to do? What is the najat? What is, what, how do you preserve yourself and protect yourself from this? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِثِ So therefore, عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Hold fast to my way. 
Because the way that I have my character, my way of life, my morals, my ideals, the simplicity, the lifestyle that I lived, the ideals that I taught, the morals that I held, all of this falls in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hold on to that because if you hold on to that, no matter what happens throughout the transitions of time, you will be safe and your deen will be safe. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin adu alayha bin nawajiz wa iyaakum wa muhdathat al umur and beware of these new, newly invented things that come inside of religion. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Because every newly thing that comes and is, is invented in the religion, is innovated in the religion, right, is misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the hellfire. So here, so many things we understand from this hadith of the Prophet about the four aspects, Iman, Islam, Ihsan, and then lastly, right, the end of times and the signs and how all of it is going to come to end. So the first three, it relates to implementing. But the last one, the fourth one, that relates to knowing. And in an amazing hadith narrated by, I believe, Huzayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhu, he said something amazing. He said that one day we were sitting and the Prophet ﷺ told us everything that is going to happen from his time all the way till the end of time, all the way till when the people of Jannah enter into Jannah and the people of the fire enter to the fire. And he said in another narration that the Prophet ﷺ told us about everything that is going to happen, even the bird that flies in the air, even about that, he said something about that to us as well. And then look at what Huzayfa says. Hafidahu man hafidahu wa nasiyahu man nasiyahu. The one who remembered it, remembered it. And the one who forgot it, forgot it. And he said, when the Prophet told us this, don't think that it was something he just said it in one hour. He said, after Fajr, the Prophet started speaking until just before Dhuhr. We prayed Salatul Dhuhr. And the Prophet continued speaking until Asr. And then the Prophet prayed Asr. And then he continued speaking till Maghrib. And then he prayed Maghrib. And he continued speaking till Isha. Like that, from Fajr all the way to Isha, the Prophet told us everything that is going to happen till the end of time. And he said this, Hafidahu man hafidahu, wa nasiyahu man nasiyahu. The one who remembered it, he remembered it. And the one who forgot it, he forgot it. And he said, me, myself, he said, I had forgotten many things. But when I would see something happening, I said, oh, I remembered that the Prophet ﷺ had said this. Like that. I had forgotten many things. I couldn't remember all of the things that the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned in that gathering and in many other gatherings. But when it would occur and that incident would happen, then I would say, oh, I remember that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had told us about this. I remember he had mentioned this. So, all of this, and this, this knowledge is for what? Right? Just like the knowledge of the signs in the DMV book. You guys done the DMV book? That knowledge of those signs, man. That's the part that's going to be in the exam. You know the signs? The stop sign, the X sign, railroad sign, yield sign, horse crossing sign, school sign. All of those signs, they're going to be what? They're going to be in the exam. What are those signs for? So when you see it, you know what to do. And why the Prophet ﷺ gave us these signs? So when you see those signs, you know what to do. It's not that when you see the stop sign, <laughs> you run right through it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Dajjal is going to come, and this is what he looks like. And he has one eye, and kafara. You can see kufr literally from his face. And he has this, and he has that. And so, so what? So you don't become his murid. That's why he's telling you all of that. You don't make him your shaykh. You don't say that, wow, the Mahdi of the time has come. Oh wow, you know, the, our great leader is here now. Oh, Ahmaq, the Prophet told you so that you stop on the stop sign. So that you go on the green light. Otherwise, when you don't know the signs, you don't know green light goes, and you don't know red light stop, and you don't know yellow, yellow light yield, then what's going to happen? Then you're going to stop on a green light, 
and you're going to go on a red light and you're going to kill yourself and you might kill somebody else. So the amarat and alamat, the signs that the Prophet ﷺ told us about is like the signs of the stop sign and the signs of the roads. So you know what to do when you see that sign. Allahu Akbar. This is the objective of these signs. Just like the signs when you are driving. So you know what to do so you don't get in an accident. You don't put your deen in an accident. Many people who are ignorant of those signs, they put their deen in danger. And they get in an accident. And they lose themselves. So beautifully, I wanted to read Sheikh Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr al-Mashhur, who passed away literally last month, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the great, great, great mashayikh of Yemen. He wrote a book on the fiqh tahawulat He has actually given his own terminology to this. Yani you, can, you cannot imagine that a, a man of such uh, knowledge and immense understanding lived in this day and age of ours. I actually found out about this book just after he passed away. After he passed away. He lived in our time. And imagine how great of a, of, of, of a mountain of knowledge he was that he wrote this in literally in poetic form. It's a manduma. And I wanted to read to you some of his poetry. He wrote this fiqh tahawulat the knowledge and the science of the changes that is going to take place and the transitions of time in poetry. And then he wrote a commentary of that himself. And then he summarizes it. And now his students, subhanAllah, he, one of his students, five, six years under the supervision of Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Mashur, Habib Abu Bakr al-Mashur, he actually was writing the, uh, uh, the fiqh of the end, understanding the fiqh and the usuls of the end of times based on Surah Al-Kahf, which took him six, seven years to actually write that book, and he just completed. One of the students of Sheikh Abu Bakr. So I wanted to read, in regards to fiqh al-tahawwalat, he mentioned something. So, yeah, so he says, الفقه أنواع وليس منحصر فيما يرى البعض بعلم مشتهر كالفقه في الصلاة والزكاة وفي الصيام وكذا الطاعات. He says that fiqh is of various categories and it is not restricted. Some people think that fiqh is only restricted to salat and zakat and hajj and fasting. No. كالفقه في الصلاة والزكاة وفي الصيام وكذا الطاعات. بل ينتهي الفقه بكل ما ورد. Rather, fiqh and understanding and science, right? A deep understanding and the technicalities, it goes back to everything that is narrated to, from the Prophet authentically. So, the matter of fiqh is a very vast field. Many, many things are included in fiqh. And this fiqh can be in any knowledge of the religion. SubhanAllah, like the fiqh of marriage. There's a fiqh in marriage. Right? Just like we have rules and regulations in salah. There's mustahab, there's fard, there's wajib, there's shart, there's mufsidat, there's wajibat, there's muharramat, isn't it? In namaz, there's things that break your namaz. There's things that validate your namaz. There's things that invalidate your salat. There's things that is a necessity before your salat. It's a prerequisite of your salat. It's the demand of salat. All of these things, right? You have the fiqh. So, Sheikh Abu Bakr is saying that everything we have this. In marriage, you have things that validate your marriage. You have things that invalidate your marriage. There's things that are re recommended in marriage. There's things that are haram in marriage. Business, the fiqh of business. There's things that are business, you know, those things that are recommended, those things that are sunnah, those things that are mustahab, those things that are haram, those things that are valid, those things which make it invalid, that business which is, you know, jayas, the business that is not jayas. It's amazing. Similarly, about the end of times, there is a fiqh. There is a whole understanding. There is a whole science that's related to it. Subhanallah, Shaykh Abu Bakr is mentioning this. Then he continues, he said, 
من أول من أول الفقه الجدير فهمه ما جاء في نص الحديث حكمه أما روى الفاروق في الصحيح حديث جبريل السوي السوي الفصيح. He says and from the first fiqh that we should know and we should learn is that which comes in the hadith narrated by Umar al-Farooq, the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, فأول الأركان إسلام الورى وبعد الإيمان من أقوى الورى وبعده الإحسان وهو المنتهى من ثابت الأركان من في أهل النهى. So the first thing as we mentioned is the arkan, the pillars of Islam. Number one is Iman, right? And then is Islam, and then is Ihsan. These are the various pillars. وَالْعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ Then Shaykh Abu Bakr is saying, as I previously mentioned in the hadith, which is talking about He says, وَالْعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ مُكَمِّلٌ لِلنَّصِ دُكْنٌ رَابِعٌ This is amazing. All of this he wrote in poetry. Can you imagine what, what an alim of such stature he was? رحمه الله تعالى. وَالْعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ And the fourth pillar which is mentioned in this hadith it is al-ilm bis-sa'a wa huwa fardun qati' this is an absolute obligation to know it is an absolute obligation and look at what shaykh abu bakr is saying if jibril alayhi salam came he mentioned islam he mentioned iman he mentioned is ihsan and then he mentioned that fourth one that means just like these three are fard and it is obligatory to know, it is also fard and obligatory to know what? The knowledge of the ends and the signs of the end of times. That's amazing. Look at the istimbat, look at how the mashayikh, they derive. He says, وَالْعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ الْعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ مُكَمِّلٌ لِلنَّصِّ رُكْنٌ رَابِعٌ And it is a completion of the the, the, the entire deen, because in the end, what did the Prophet say to Umar? That was Jibreel, he came to you to teach your deen. And what did he mention as part of deen? The signs of the day of judgment. This is part of our deen. Why is it part of our deen? Because it protects your deen. Just like the signs, the road signs, and the exam of the road signs, it's a part of the exam. Why is it part of the exam? It's going to protect you. It's going to keep the road safe. It's going to keep you from getting into an accident. So just like that, all of the Islam, Iman, Ihsan, it's important for you to know. It's just as important for you to know these signs because this is the completion of your deen. In it is the perfection of your deen. In it is the protection of your deen. In it is the perfection of your deen and in it is the protection of your deen. وَلَعِلْمُ بِالسَّاعَةِ فَرْضٌ قَاطِعٌ مُكَمِّلٌ لِلنَّصِّ رُكْنٌ رَابِعٌ ضَابِطُهُ الْحَاوِي لِرُكْنِيَّتِهِ سِيَاقُهُ الْمُبْدِي لِمَاهِيَّتِهِ And he says, ضَابِطُهُ الْحَاوِي لِرُكْنِيَّتِهِ سِيَاقُهُ الْمُبْدِي لِمَاهِيَّتِهِ and he says, what's the proof that it is one of the pillars? What is the proof that this is one of the pillars? The proof this is one of the pillars is that it's being mentioned with the other three. Right? As Shaykh Abu Bakr says, he says that, رُكْنُ نَوَبِمُ وَجُزْءٌ لَا يَتَجَزَّأُ مِنْ حَدِيثِ جِبْرِيلِ The dalil and the proof that this is a rukun of the deen is huwa juz'un la yatajazza'u min hadith jibril Hafizab, how is this? Is this amazing or what? I'll send you the PDF of this. This is the proof that this uh, yani, rukun, knowing the signs of the end, that it is a part, it's a pillar of the religion, is the fact that it is in mentioned in the hadith jibril and Jibreel alayhi salam actually asks the Prophet about it. He brings it up with the discussion of all the other aspects that he's saying. Subhanallah. Atakum jib atakumu jibrilu bil ilm illadi. Atakumu jibrilu bil ilm illadi. Yufasilu dina famanza yahtadi. 
He says, Jibreel came to you with this knowledge. That is the proof that it is a pillar of this religion. Otherwise, Jibreel wouldn't have mentioned anything about it. If it's not important, why did Jibreel come with it? Why did Jibreel mention it? Why did Jibreel ask about it? وَالْأَخْذُ بِالثَّلَاثِ مَظْهَرُ الثَّبَاتِ وَالْأَخْذُ بِالثَّلَاثِ مَظْهَرُ الثَّبَاتِ أَمَّا الْأَخِيرُ مَظْهَرُ التَّحَوُّلَاتِ He says, as for the first three, these are matters which they are called thawabit. They are thawabit. These things never change. It's the knowledge of actions and things that don't change. It's knowledge of unchanging things. Iman never changes. It's not like, oh, well, you know, we believed in angels 1400 years ago. Now we don't believe in angels, you see? Because Hollywood already showed us that it's, you know, Hollywood can make it, you know, on their screen. So we don't believe it anymore because Hollywood can do it. Or, you know, these, whatever, that, that was at that time and now things have changed. No, these are thawabit. These are thawabit. وَالْأَخْذُ بِالثَّالِثِ مَظْهَرُ الثَّبَاتِ Taking of the first three. The first three relate to matters that are unchanging and you do not transition. Salat did not, was not two rakats then and now, you know, mashallah, and 1400 years ago, we are very lazy, so it becomes one rakat. Before we had witr, now we get more tired than people before, so then we don't have to pray witr now. Before the people were very strong, we would do Ramadan. Now we're only going to keep Ramadan in Christmas time because it's, it, you know, the days are too long for us. Astaghfirullah. Right? So these things are thawabit. They don't change. Ammal akhiru madharu tahawulat. As for the signs of the end of times, this talks about things that are constantly changing. And when they are changing, you have to be aware of those changes. Salah doesn't change. Fasting doesn't change. And uh, you know, Muslims, they, <laughs> these are the things that Muslims, they're confused about. Like, oh, Maulana Saab, see, we have iPhone now, so we should change the Quran. Oh, Zalim, Beokuf, kya baat kar rahe ho, yaar? Like, what are, you, what are you saying? We have, what does the iPhone have to do with Quran? Quran talks about akhlaq, Quran talks about character, Quran talks about generosity. Now you have the iPhone, so we change the Quran. What are you talking about? So that has nothing to do with changing our faith or changing because the, the Qur'an and what is mentioned in the Qur'an is all matters that are thawabit, unchanging matters. But the, the signs of the end of times, they are things that are about happenings and occurrences that are constantly changing so that we be aware of those changes and we make changes as is appropriate for those times, right? If we know that our deen is going to be in danger, if we know that, for example, yukthiru zina, right? Fornication is going to be abundant. And, you know, these type of things are going to be widespread and sins are going to be widespread. So then we should make our communities and we should make planning for our family accordingly to those changes. Go in an environment which we will not be in those places where these huge changes are. Keep yourself in the places where the sunnah of the Prophet And then inshallah we will be discussing, okay now, what does the changes require from us that we need to do? Inshallah, we, these are some of the things we're going to discuss. Alamatun min sha'niha tagayyuru wa dhikruha fin nasi sirrun khatiru. And these are signs, and the signs, the effect of them, they are, you know, changes that take place in society. And when changes take place in society, the important thing about those changes is you being cognizant, you being cautious, right? The sign, when you see the stop sign, I know that I have to stop. When I see, right, green light, that means I have to go. So the, the objective of these signs is so that you be aware at every given moment so you know what to do and how to, you know, conduct yourself in that situation. An example of that is, he mentions here, 
I don't want to go through each one. Uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu is a hadith narrated in Bukhari. But somebody might say is, what do you mean that, you know, go with the changes? How do I go with the changes? So the Prophet said that after I pass away, there's going to be a lot of killing. And there's going to be a lot of turmoil, differences, political rife. Beware. Don't get involved in these. So Abu Hurairah says, أَعْطَانِي خَلِيلِي جِرَابَيْنِي أَوْ وِعَاعَيْنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ The Prophet gave me two utensils of knowledge. أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَقَدْ بَذَثْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ As for one of them, I gave you that knowledge. وَأَمَّا الْآخَرُ فَوَاللَّهِ لَوْ بَثَثْتُهُ لَقُطِعَ مِنِّي هَذَا الْحُلْقُومِ He says, as for the other one, that if I would have told you about it, if I mention it, if I talk about it, then this throat of mine will be cut. We have to be careful now. We have to just have to be careful in these times. In other words, he is making an indication that when those changes come, you also be aware. Okay, he knew that those signs are there, and the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned that there will be, you know, things that will take place and fitnas and you should stay away from it and you should not have any political affiliations and so on and so forth. And same thing is happening now. Right? People are jumping as soon as there's a new jamaat. Allah rai takbir. Okay, go. Narai takbir. Jump with them as well. And then Narai takbir, he's dead already. And, you know, what happened to his family and what happened to his kids and what every new jamaat is coming. Narai takbir. Okay, jump with them. Narai takbir. Just avoid these killings. Don't defile your hands in the blood of people. Don't be involved in any of this. Like when this ISIS and Al-Qaeda started coming out, they started catching the youth with this. Where the Prophet some 1400 years ago has said there will be these groups that will come out like ISIS, calling people, come, come, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Islam, come fight, come kill, come blow yourself up. But the Prophet said, don't involve in your life, and put your life in this Guard yourself from this. Be aware. That's a stop sign. These people will come. Their dawah and their claims will be from the Quran and the Sunnah. And what are they telling you? Kill Muslim. Not a single ISIS has killed a non-Muslim. Except some of their, their, their Hollywood videos that they've made, where they're, they're beheadings, right? Whatever. All of their killings, go right now. ISIS is in Afghanistan. All they do is they put bombs in the masajid. Muslim does this. A Muslim puts bomb in the masjid. Muslim kills innocent Muslims. And how foolish are those youngsters? How foolish are the youngsters who fall in that? Because they are not following the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that there will be people, that they will recite Qur'an to you. And their prayer will be better than your prayer and their recitation will be better than your recitation. But what are they? <laughs> their job and their hobby is killing people. Yeah. That's their hobby. That's their job. That's what they do. That's what they're good at. They catch some of these people. Wallahi, they cannot even read Surah Fatiha properly. They catch some of these guys. Wallahi, they don't even know how to make istinja properly. They don't even know how to read Surah Fatiha properly. And subhanallah, they're doing jihad. La hawla wa la illa billah. They're doing fasad. They're not doing jihad. They're doing fasad. So here, he says, I have... Abu Huraira is saying, I have removed myself from these fitna. I'm not going to get involved in all these politics, in all these dramas. He said and she said, and he's kafir. You know, kafir, kafir. You see these jamaats, Allah, takbir, kafir. Go to every Muslim country. This is what stup stupidity people are involved in. Ek jamaat, dusi jamaat ko kafir ke hai. For God's sakes, just. You, both of you have masajid, both of you read kalima, both of you facing towards the qibla, both of you are fasting in the month of Ramadan. One of these members, he says, yeah, they told me that these people were, were fighting them, they're kafir. So when we were, they gave us AK-47, we're standing there, and then we're hearing the azan coming from those kafirs. They gave us AK-47 and said, kafir ko qatil karo. Yeah, go kill those kafirs. Oh, okay, AK-47. Okay, we're going to go kill the kafirs. In the morning, the Fajr namaz, this muazzin of our masjid is also giving azan. 
And on the side, the kafir, he said, well, MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, what kafir is this? This is an amazing kafir. He's also giving azan and he's also praying salat and beautiful qiraat. Okay, now we're going to go kill, kill the kafir that he prays namaz five times a day. What kind of kafir is this? This is that, that, that when he was not able to see the stop signs, when he wasn't able to see the red light, ignorance and being, being trapped by these wrong people. من فتنة أو محنة تهدد أو من تراهم للمسيح مهدوا أو من سيأتوا ينصروا دين الإله من كل حبر صادق في الاتجاه and what does this do when you know it when you know it what does it do for you علامة من شأتها تغير وذكرها في الناس سر خطير the sign is supposed to inform you, the signs inform you of a fitna, of a trial that is coming, or mihna, or a tribulation. To haddidu, it's warning you. This is what the signs do. So when you see it, you be aware that I don't fall into this. Or man tarahum lil masihi mahadu. Or you see them that they are paving the way for Sayyidina Masih. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Aw man sayatu yansuru deen al ilah. Or you see them, those people who are helping the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet said, that there will be people in my deen that will continue carrying the truth till the end of times. So why did the Prophet say that to us? So that we can go sit with them. So we can keep company of those people. Lidha stafada dhikruha munfarida wa sannafu fiha. Ruquman Mufrada. And that is why many, many ahadith we see in this regard. That is why we see many, many narrations from the Prophet that have been narrated. And separate, complete books. And I have a book right here in front of me. Mukhtasar Tafkiratul Qurtubi. Right? Tathkiratu bi ahulal al mauta wa umul al akhira, right? The Tathkira of Imam Qurtubi. This is basically a 350 page book about the signs of the day of time, the end of times. Entire books have been written about explaining and discussing the signs of the end of times because of the importance so that we can be aware. So with that being said, these are inshallah some of the things that will be discussed. For amongst, if we were to summarize it in one, Shaykh Abu Bakr mentions here, قَالَ النَّبِيُّ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الْوَارِدِي عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ شَوَاهِدِي عَلَيْكُمُ بِسُنَّةِ شَوَاهِدِي وَسُنَّةِ الْآتَيْنَ وَسُنَّةِ الْآتَيْنَ بَعْدِي خُلَفَا أَبْضُوا عَلَيْهَا لَا تَكُونُوا ضُعَفَا And he says, and the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, what is the main thing you should be aware of in the end of times? Right? Alaykum bi sunnati. Hold on to my sunnah. So this is why, and this is the objective of the upcoming series, inshaAllah, is alaykum bi sunnati. The hadith is from the sunnah of the Prophet. And mentioning these narrations is from the sunnah of the Prophet. Talking about this is about the sunnah of the Prophet. And then knowing of it and guarding ourselves from it is from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa sunnat al atayna baadi khulafa and the sunnah of those who come after me, the khulafa. Abdu alayha la takunu duafa and hold on to it and do not be from those who are weak. With that being said, inshallah, we'll stop here. This is just a introduction. We will have an introduction to the whole series and what the objective of the hadith and you know, we'll have, have the whole breakdown. But today I wanted to specifically discuss the four pillars. Iman, Islam, Ihsan, and the signs of the end of times, right? And how all of that is part of our deen. Because, the, in essence, the last and final one, it is what protects us and what, is, what actually perfects us 
Otherwise, you can be practicing. As we learned, there's people who pray Salat, there's people who read Quran, but because they're not aware of those signs, they fall into the fitnas. They don't know the stop signs and they don't know the red lights and the green lights and the yellow lights. What happens? They fall into it. They get trapped into it. They become misguided and deviated. And that is why they, have the, they might have the first three, but they don't know the fourth one. And they're confused. Or a lot of people are confused. A lot of people lose hope. Why is this happening? And in that, you're not supposed to lose hope. When you see those signs, you'll be like, SubhanAllah, the Messenger of Allah told us it increases your iman. It doesn't make you despair or make you lose hope. When you actually see it, it increases your faith because you said, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand what has been said. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, an ashadu an la ilaha illa ta'ala astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.